Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. Um, today I want to talk about C++11 range-based for loops. So these are used to iterate over a bunch of items within a collection and its, it's most common use is uh, something like for each in languages like Java and C Sharp. Uh, as we'll see, the mechanism is not only convenient, but it's also extremely versatile. A little bit of an outline as to what we're going to do today. Uh, we've got some similar mechanisms, first of all, to go through. Um, I won't go through those in detail, just briefly. Uh, basic syntax will be the next thing. Then we'll have a look at iterating through STD arrays and, well, arrays and STD collections. And then we'll have a look at altering the items in your collections with the ampersand. And finally, uh, a big example at the end on uh, how you might go about mimicking something like the Python range mechanism to provide a novel approach to the famous FizzBuzz question. Alrighty, so on to some similar mechanisms. Microsoft offers for each in uh, Microsoft C++. Yeah, but it's not, uh, it's not recommended because it's not widely supported by compilers. Um, you've also got something else that's very similar in uh, STD, the standard namespace. That's the for each um, loop, and uh, that only works with STD collections, and you've got to put the algorithms header in your program. And onto the basic syntax. So the syntax is super, super simple for a for based, uh, a range based for loop. Uh, we've got the for keyword same as a normal for loop. Then we've got the variable type and an identifier. I've just called mine var just here. Uh, you follow that with a colon and then the collection that you want to iterate through. And what's going to happen is that for every element in range, so if this is an array with say 10 items, then for each of those 10 items, uh, they'll be assigned to the variable var and the loop body will run. Yeah, and you can use that variable var inside the body of your loop. Nice and easy. So here's an example of iterating through a basic array. I'll just copy this. We'll do some coding at the end, but for now I'll just use copy. Um, all right, so I've got my array of five integers, one, two, three, four, five, and here's my range-based for loop. Uh, int is the data type, the identifier is i, and the collection is a double r. If I hit run, we should see one, two, three, four, five printed to the screen. Good stuff. There you go. For each element in the list, a double r, um, they're assigned to the variable i. They're actually copied in this instance, and we're printing them out in the body of our loop. Yeah, it's as simple as that, really. It's as simple as that. Uh, the next, next example, ah, uh, auto. Yeah, so you can use the auto keyword if you want. So uh, auto is uh, just a little keyword that means that the compiler can figure out the data type for you. So in this instance, it would be integers. Uh, or you could just put double here. I mean, it doesn't matter. The compiler is not going to have any trouble figuring out the uh, data type there. So it's really common to use auto for the data type in these range-based for loops. And uh, std vectors. So it's also really, really common to use these range-based for loops to step through vectors. So if we had something like um, vector int, might have to include the header at the top. Uh, vector. I'll call it a double r equals and one two three four five. Um, yeah, so that's really common as well. No worries, exactly the same as an array. If we hit run, we should get one two three four five. Good stuff. Obviously, with a vector because it's kind of dynamic, you can add a, a new item if you if you need to with uh, push back. So we can add a twelve to the end. There you go. One two three four five twelve. <laughs> nice. Okay, so uh, I did mention it before. Um, the i just here is uh, is a copy of these elements. So if you alter the i within within the loop, uh, it won't actually alter the elements in our collection. So if we say something like i plus um, plus, and then we make another uh, for loop down here, um, also i and a double r. Um, this first range-based for loop will only alter the i value within its own body. Yeah, down here. When we come to print them out, just below, we'll see that the uh, the one actually hasn't changed. The two won't change. The four won't change. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, twelve. So if you want to actually alter the values in your range-based for loop, then you're going to want to put a pass by reference ampersand there. 
Uh, if we run this, we should see that the first range based for loop has incremented all of the items. Yeah, two, three, four, five, six, thirteen. Good stuff. Okay, so that's something to be aware of. Um, something else to be aware of is that this doesn't work with heap allocated arrays. So if you allocate an array with the new operator, something like this, int star a double r equals new int 100, um, you're not going to be able to use a range based for loop. And the reason for that is that this range based for loop, as we're about to see, actually needs uh, iterators, a few extra things defined uh, for it in order to work. Yeah, so in the background, this is actually just calling a bunch of um, methods with this uh, collection just here. And a heap allocated array doesn't have these methods, so yeah, range-based for loop won't work. Alrighty, but uh, onto the main example for today. This is the this is the last example as well. So in Python, there's a special range function. Uh, for example, range one to ten. I think that's the syntax. Uh, it counts from one to nine, uh, up to and including nine. So Python's range function doesn't actually allocate the array of numbers, which is really really cool in C++ we don't have this range function you know we couldn't normally do um, we couldn't normally say something like this um, yeah uh, you couldn't normally do that uh, but that's exactly what we're about to do so in Python all it would do is uh, just kind of invent this range thing just here uh, without actually allocating 100 integers and it would run through the loop with this i variable uh, in much the same way as a perfectly normal for loop would do. So Python's method is very convenient, like that syntax that we just had, uh, even though you can't do it in C++ normally, it's, it's a convenient syntax. The other really good thing about Python's loop that I, that I mentioned is that if your, if your for loop runs from zero to say a million, so if we've got something like that, um, we don't want to allocate a vector. I mean, we could do this with a vector. You could just say vector and then int and then whatever and then push back a million items. But a vector with a million items is going to take up like 4 million bytes of RAM and uh, that's not very polite on your user. <laughs> so what we're going to do is create a custom class which defines its own iterators and which the ranged for loop can iterate through in pretty much the same way as Python's range function. And we're going to use it to solve the FizzBuzz programming interview question. So FizzBuzz goes something like this. Uh, I want you to write out the integers from 1 to 100 with the exception that uh, integers divisible by 3 should be printed as fizz. Integers divisible by 5 should be printed as buzz. Uh, it's not written there, but integers divisible by both 3 and 5 should print FizzBuzz. Okay, so what I want to do is create a similar uh, idea, but we're going to, you know, up the ante a little bit. I want FizzBuzz to go from 1 to 1 million instead of 1 to 100 and printing out a million lines of uh, anything is very very slow so instead of printing out each iteration of the loop uh, I just want our FizzBuzz to count how many fizzes there were, how many buzzes there were and how many fizz buzzes there were. Uh, that's your objective really on the next uh, next slide we've got what you're given at the start and you can have a go at this if you want Okay, this is what we're given. Um, include IO stream for uh, C out. Um, main method down here, we've got uh, three counters. Uh, the number of fizz buzzers, which is the number of elements that were divisible by 15. Uh, fizz, which will be a count of the number of elements that were divisible by three. And buzz, which will be the elements divisible by five. And here's my range based for loop. So you could obviously do this with just a, a normal for loop, you know, for int i equals zero while i is less than a million than uh, whatever. Um, but I, you know, I just want to show an, a, a demonstration of how to um, make a very interesting class which implements iterators. The range based for loop has i as the um, thing. <laughs> As the what was the uh, identifier has I as the identifier, goodness, and the collection is this Creole range uh, object just here. Now this is what we're going to spend our time making. So Creole range is going to count from one to one million, and in such a way that we can use it in our range-based for loop, and also in such a way that it doesn't allocate, um, you know, all of those integers uh, in a vector. Yeah, you could just allocate it in a vector. That would be um, 
be very wasteful on RAM. So the body of the for loop just increments those counters um, whenever the I variable comes across 15, or something divisible by 15, 3 or 5. And then at the end, I just print out those um, counters. Okay, so the main crux of today is uh, this uh, Creole range just here. How do you implement your own class which um, a range-based for loop can uh, iterate over? Alrighty, so we want a new class called Creole range. Uh, it's going to have an int min, uh, max, and current position. Okay, so min is going to be the one down here. Max is going to be the million. That's the final number that we're counting up to. And current position is going to be wherever we are up to at the moment. Um, I want to mention that a lot of the examples that you'll find online of doing basically what we're doing here, um, they tend to split this Creole range into two different classes. So you'll have your range class and you'll also have your iterator class. Um, that's another way to do it. That's another way to do it. I, I prefer this way because, well, it's simpler code-wise. It's shorter. But um, yeah, you might want to have a look at other examples online. I've got um, a website that I want to show you after we're done here where there's a, a very good example of how to do this. Okay, so I've got one class that's going to act both as the range and the iterator. So I might just keep a pointer of the iterator version just here inside my class. Okay, first thing that we need to do for our class is define this Creole range constructor. Uh, min, int, max, and just save min and max. So this, uh, min, whoops, min equals min, and this, ah, oh, max equals max. All right, that's about it. Uh, we're also going to need begin and end. So. Um, this range-based for loop down here actually operates by uh, checking the iterators uh, begin and end. Whatever we define as begin and end, it's going to check uh, against um, the current position. So we need to define the begin and end functions. Like these two functions just here will be called by this loop here, uh, just inherently, you know, in the background, that's what it does. Uh, so we'll need to define those. Um, we also need to define uh, the increment operator. So our it's going to be ampersand, I think, for speed reasons. Uh, our our object is going to be incremented each iteration, and we obviously need to provide the plus plus to increment. Um, what else do we need? Um, it's basically like a normal for loop. So it's something like um, for uh, i equals, um, you know, the creel thing dot begin uh, while it's less than dot end um, i plus plus. That's what this range based for loop is going to type out. So we've defined the uh, we've defined the begin and end. Well, we put the um, you know prototypes there. We also have to define the not equal to operator just here. Um, I'm just going to return a bool uh, operator not equal to that and right hand side. Something like that. And I think the final thing that we want to do is we don't want to iterate through these objects returning um, Creole ranges for each one, we want to return an int for each one. So we've got to override the pointer uh, operator, which is a little bit weird, but we want the pointer to a Creel range to actually return an integer so that we can um, we'll get this i value out, basically. Um, so we'll define the pointer operator. Uh, there we go, and something like, uh, well, we don't define them yet. It's going to return um, current position, though. Okay, so for our begin and end. Now the begin and end functions both return uh, an iterator. They don't return a normal Creole range. They return this iterator thing just here. So we might make another private constructor. Um, another private constructor, which is the constructor for the iterator version of this class. 
like I said, people like to split this into two classes, but I'm just using one. So this here is the iterator constructor, and this is the normal creel range constructor that the user can call. I don't know how much sense that makes, but um, well, this is a pretty easy function. So we're going to want uh, this min, whoops. Uh, this current position equals current position, current pos, and this iterator equals iterator. Yeah, it's just got to copy it pretty much. Um, okay, so down here in begin, we want to actually return that iterator just there, so, uh, or, or one of those iterators there, but um, one that's on min. Yeah, so the beginning of our loop, we want to start at min. And the ending of our loop is when the iterator is at max. And plus plus, well, the plus plus just increments the current position and returns uh, this, maybe. Returns star this. Okay, so this is actually prefix plus plus. Now, if you want postfix, then you've got to put a... a, 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 a um, something inside these brackets, but this is prefix plus plus. Not that it matters for our present circumstance. Um, not equal to, so so um, two Creel ranges and or two Creel iterators, iterators is what they'll be. Um, they're not equal to each other if the current position is not equal to each other. So we'll just return rhs and dot um, a. Should do the trick, and the star operator just returns the current position. Yeah, so if you try and take the address of one of these Creole ranges, what you'll get is an integer, which is the current position. And I think that's about it. I think that's about it. So let's just hit play and see what happens. Yeah, good stuff. So there's a whole bunch of uh, integers from 1 to a million that were divisible by 15, a whole bunch more that were divisible by only 3, and then some more that were divisible by 5. Yeah, but what we've just done is uh, create our own Python uh, range-like mechanism, and you could, you know, you could do basically whatever you want. You could put an extra parameter here, which is a step. Maybe you want to step backwards in twos. Um, yeah, you could implement that. Um, you wouldn't have to have integers. You know, this Creole range counter just here could could be iterating through any sort of structures or other classes. Uh, it's very, very flexible and versatile. Good stuff. Okay, so pretty much the best examples of doing anything in C++ and many other languages are covered with the tireless and dare I say genius expertise of Mr. Alain. So if you're interested in the techniques that I've done in the final example, you probably want to visit uh, his page, which I'll have a link of in the video description. And he provides a more detailed and much more careful treatment of wrangling a ranged for loop. Yeah, but sort of along the same veins as what we've just done. And in conclusion, range for loops are a small convenience. You can pretty much do anything that they offer with a normal for loop, uh, but they are a small convenience. And coupled with the fact that you can define your own classes uh, to iterate over, uh, I mean, you know, you can do some really, really cool things. If you're interested and you're feeling charitable, I've got a Patreon, and also you can visit the Facebook page. Links in the video description. Above all, thank you very much for watching and I want you to have a really good day. Adios.